Steve with MSpec Performance and this is Tech Talk Tuesday. Today's topic is going to be nitrous oxide, different types of systems from direct port to a single nozzle to dry versus wet, tuning issues, some safety concerns, different methods of delivery, different methods of tuning and managing nitrous oxide. So we'll go ahead and jump in. For those of you that don't know how nitrous works, nitrous oxide when it gets heated turns into oxygen so we're spraying a large amount of oxygen into an engine uh, or just a, a measured amount of oxygen that people like to refer to as a shot right you've heard probably heard my i'm running a 50 shot or a 70 shot or a 90, a 90 shot or a 100 shot that refers to the amount of nitrous that is that is sprayed into the intake plenum of your car more oxygen plus more fuel equals more power Second point of nitrous is lower intake air temps. It's, nitrous oxide is very, very cold. If you've ever opened a bottle and, uh, and sprayed it on your hand, well, we'll just show you a little bit here. That white cloud is how cold nitrous is, and that will freeze your finger. This, this nozzle already is frosted just from that, just from that tiny bit of nitrous that we let out. Um, so, you reduce intake air temperatures and you make the air charge more dense, thus creating more horsepower. So it's kind of a twofold win-win uh, with nitrous. Some downsides to nitrous would be it's a consumable, right? You, you, this, this is a 10 pound bottle. What that means is it holds 10 pounds of nitrous. Empty the bottle weighs 15 pounds, full the bottle weighs 25 pounds, but it's a consumable. And right now I believe nitrous is close to $10 a pound or $7 a pound, somewhere in there. So it can get, it can get spendy um, to have to keep refilling nitrous. Tuning, safety, you probably have all seen some videos of some uh, nitrous backfires, some pretty gnarly back nitrous backfires and stuff where hoods come flying off of cars and, and I don't know, trailers blow up, right? Cause bottles explode and, and that, that's real. That's all very real, that happens. Uh, nitrous backfires are typically caused by pooling. Um, you are injecting nitrous at a, at a lower throttle position than what is ideal, or you're injecting such a large amount of nitrous that the engine isn't consuming all of it, or there could be some voids in your intake manifold where nitrous can pull up behind and then you close it, it gets a heat source and boom, you have a intake manifold with a closed throttle body and a bunch of nitrous and that is a potential bomb. Um, and that's where you see hoods blow up. Shit. Oh my God. Just picky to run sometimes. You need to, need to make sure that you have everything set up right and you're, and you're using it properly. And you'll even, even season nitrous junkies that love it, you know, they, they still will have, will still have some issues with it. So the best you can do is just make sure you, you, you have all your bases covered when you're running nitrous and make sure you have as many safeties as possible. Kind of leads us into how do you figure out what those safeties are? What are things that you can use? You know, how are systems set up? So here we have a Nitrous Express, one of their controllers. This would be considered just a standalone add-on type of system for any car that wanted to run nitrous. You have your arming switch. Always have to have a master arming switch. And this controller taps into some basic sensors on the car. So it'll tap into the TAC, it'll tap into the um, throttle position sensor, and off the top of my head, I don't remember what the other one is. And we can set up your nitrous parameters based on throttle position and RPM. You don't want the nitrous coming on so low where the engine really isn't, isn't into any type of a power band yet. Um, that's how you bend connecting rods and cause some pretty serious engine damage. And then typically you want nitrous to only work at wide open throttle conditions. These boxes have made installing a lot easier, the safety side of things a lot easier. Oxygen sensor, that was the other one it can tie into read and read your air fuel ratio. Sorry to skip around. So high, high throttle position sensors, typically 80% or above. That's when the engine's gonna be in its highest efficiency and be using all of the air that's coming in to make power. Relay supplies power to your nitrous solenoid. Your nitrous solenoid will then inject nitrous oxide into your intake manifold. So in the beginning I said we have uh, methods of, uh, different methods of how it's delivered. You can use fogger nozzles. There's both wet and dry systems 
for using a fogger nozzle or a direct port system. This would be an example of a single fogger nozzle that would go in your intake, intake plenum. You have nitrous come in on one side, you have fuel come in on the other side. To run this type of nozzle, you need to tap your fuel system and you would have a second, this is actually a purge solenoid, but you would have a second re, uh, relay similar to this one where you're feeding fuel in, in the correct portion proportion to the amount of nitrous that's being fed. These are your, everybody wants to call them shots. These are your nitrous pills or these are your nitrous jets. If you're running a wet system, you'll have a certain size of nitrous jet and then you will have a certain size of fueling jet to give you the right ratio. And you can actually tune that. You can tune that, you know, there the guidelines that they give you is a good base to start. It's a safe place to start, um, but you can ultimately adjust your air fuel ratio accordingly. Bottle pressure. Bottle pressure is probably one of the most important parts of accurate nitrous injection. You can see you have your gauge here. You have yellow, red, green, red. Um, once you get into the red, you, you really need to cool the bottle down. But then the second problem becomes, how do you get the bottle pressure up? If you'll see right now, this bottle is sitting at ambient air temperature and our bottle pressure is, is less than ideal. I think we're at about 750 PSI and we want to be about 1,000 PSI. 950 to 1,000 is the ideal pressure for nitrous. That's when we employ a bottle heater. What a bottle heater will do, wraps around the bottle, heats the bottle, it's all in the name. They have 110, they have 12 volt, but in your car, you know, you'd have a bottle heater. Wrap around the bottle. Plug it in, turn it on, heats the bottle up. So what happens if I forget to unplug this? What happens if I run no safeties when I'm using a bottle heater? Well, you'll drive the pressure all the way down and risk blowing, popping off the safety valve, blowing all the nitrous, losing everything. That's why using a bottle heater strategy of sorts is a very, very good way to go. Uh, you'll actually can use this extra port here and they'll have a hob switch that screws in. And when the bottle pressure gets to the correct pressure, it will disable the bottle heater. Again, going back to safeties, that's, that's important things to have with nitrous cover your bases, have all the correct safety equipment to run nitrous. Can you grab just a basic nitrous kit, put it in your car, run? Yes. Is it the best way to go? Not really. You, you become your own safety measures. You're the one that has to monitor bottle pressure. You're the one that has to monitor the temps and make sure everything is correct. You know, and, and that's fine until you get complacent and forget to do it a couple of times and then you run into problems. So all these, jetting choices and everything are all based off of bottle pressure okay if you don't have some type of safety that will shut your bottle pressure or shut your nitrous system down when the pressure gets too high you run a risk of blowing your engine up because now you are out of the efficiency that they designed the jetting to work with or you're, you're out of your air fuel ratio you're too low bottle pressure is too low now you're going to run really rich when nitrous comes on so Again, monitoring consistencies, those are challenges with nitrous. In, if for instance, uh, in Formula Drift Texas and St. Louis, the outside air temperature was so hot that we were actually packing the nitrous bottles with ice to try and get the bottle pressure down uh, just, just to get them back into our operating range, which leads to the next way that we typically control nitrous, which would be through your standalone engine management system. Tying back into some of those advanced features we talked about in a previous video, Nitrous control is great through a standalone. We can do timing adjustment, we can do safeties. So on all of our cars that we do with the standalone engine management, we have if the bottle pressure is too low, we'll have a warning. If the bottle pressure is too high, it will disable the nitrous system until the bottle pressure falls back into a happy range. We can drive bottle heater strategy from the standalone engine management so that it will actually turn the bottles on and off or the bottle heaters on and off to keep to keep the nitrous in that happy range. Um, we can have other safeties tied in where if you're, if the car is experiencing some other type of error, uh, whether it's too lean or oil pressure is too low or uh, we lose a sensor, let's say we're having an issue with a TPS sensor and the computer has determined that to be at fault, we can have that disable the nitrous system completely so we don't run into a problem.
purge solenoids, all the, the vapor that you guys see coming out of the hood at the drag strip or anywhere, anywhere somebody's purging nitrous off, right? The purpose of that is because typically you'll have your nitrous bottle in the back of the car. That's, that's the traditional mounting position. Sometimes people have them in the center. Typically it's in the trunk of the car somewhere, somewhere that's hard to get to. So you have 15 feet of line from the bottle coming up to your solenoids, which are mounted near the intake manifold on the car. When you open the bottle and all the solenoids are closed as they should be, you now have 15 feet of air before the intake manifold. So the purpose of the nitrous purge solenoid is to get all of that air out of the line. And it looks cool. I mean, you know, it intimidates people for sure when you're piping off nitrous in their face. But the main purpose of it is to vent all of the air out of the system so that you're ready to go. Because what happens if you do not do that is you'll get a massive rich hit when the nitrous comes on because the fuel system's already ready to go. So the fuel, the fuel solenoid opens and the nitrous solenoid opens, but you have no nitrous there to mix with the fuel and then the car breaks up, falls over, potentially you lose the race or fouls out, you know, something like that happens. So that is the actual purpose of the nitrous purge solenoid is to get the air out. And then there's other stuff like timing delays and everything because there is a time depending on how far away the solenoids are mounted from the intake manifold, there is an amount of time that takes place, but from when the nitrous hits, for, for when, sorry, for, from when the nitrous leaves the solenoid to the time it actually gets to uh, the motor. Method of delivery, right? You hear the two different kinds, fogger nozzle, which we talked about in the intake manifold, or I'm sorry, this will be in your, uh, in your intake before the throttle body, then a direct port system. And you, there's other methods too. They, they have plate systems for different cars. There's, 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 there are multiple ways that they deliver it, but the main ways are the ones that, how do I put it? Even the plate systems are still a type of a direct port system, right? So this is be pre throttle body. Direct port systems will be post throttle body. They're always in the intake manifold. And by direct port, if you have a four cylinder, you're going to have four nozzles. If you have a six cylinder, six, you know, an eight cylinder will have eight. You will have an individual nozzle for every runner, intake runner, or every cylinder that is on the car. You'll take that same nitrous load. If it's 150 shot and you were running this, this big pill to get 150 shot on a single nozzle, single nozzle, it'll split it up over the eight. So that it's still the same or six. So it's still the same amount of nitrous. It'll just be a much smaller size on your, on your nitrous pill. Um, benefits to direct port, it's spraying right at the intake valves. It's, it's shooting it straight into the motor. So you don't have that, that delay from outside the throttle body to wide open throttle to filling the plenum. It's just there ready to go. Tunability per cylinder is, is also awesome with it. So let's, no engine is exactly the exact same efficiency in every cylinder, every single cylinder. You know, you're, you're going to have most, most V8s run lean on cylinder seven. So with a direct port nitrous, we can compensate for that. We can measure with the exhaust gas temperature probes. We can measure each cylinder on nitrous and we can see that one is, is maybe getting a little bit more nitrous, a little less fuel, more fuel, and we can actually adjust fuel accordingly per cylinder with a direct port system. Whereas a fogger system, it's, it's not going to be the same because you have one nozzle that's required or you have one nozzle that is filling the entire plenum. Um, so, doesn't work quite the same way. On to the shot of nitrous that everybody calls, you know, 50 shot, 70 shot, like we talked about. Naturally aspirated, so that's no other power adder, just, just a NA engine using nitrous. A 50 shot will typically gain you close to, it's not exact, but close to about 50 horsepower. That's kind of how that works out. You know, 50 shot, 70 shot would be close to 70, 90, so on and so forth. Um, Again, not an exact, but it comes out very, very close to that. So when someone's running, you know, a 500 shot, right? They're running 500 horsepower worth of nitrous, roughly, you know, and that's a, that's a lot, a lot, a lot of nitrous. The other cool thing with nitrous is you can compound it with boost, right? So you start stacking power adders together. You can use them in a supercharged application, turbocharged application, you know, use it to both get a cooling effect and change your power band, change your, change, change your, your torque band, change the characteristic of it. When you start compounding nitrous with boost, 
you need to tread cautiously because a 50 shot is not going to be 50 horsepower. And a 50 shot with eight pounds of boost is going to be way different than a 50 shot with 30 pounds of boost. So you, you, you need to be on a dyno and you need to be paying attention to everything that you're doing. And like I said, tread cautiously. Uh, here's an example on one of our Pro-Am cars. We run, um, I believe it's a 75 shot and at power level five, so that's 27 pounds of boost, that 75 shot makes us about 195 horsepower and 150 foot pounds of torque. That's a pretty, that's a pretty big hit of nitrous out of just a 75 shot direct port. So, you know, that stuff needs to be done on the dyno and needs to really be set up with someone that knows what they're doing. They're great on superchargers, especially blow through superchargers where you're pushing all that heated air through a air to water heat exchanger that's mounted directly over the intake manifold. Those heat soak really, really bad. So you get the power gains from nitrous, torque gains from nitrous, and then you also are cooling off your intake air temp, cooling down your, your, your after cooler and, um, and yeah, kind of neat how nitrous works. Again, though, being cautious, tread lightly, go slow, start small, build your way up from there. Then, um, another method, another way that you can do this is what we're starting to do a lot, um, in, in all of the the higher end nitrous stuff that we do is a solid state, solid state relays. This is a traditional relay. It's, it's literally just a, it's a mechanical switch inside of here that's operated by electric current in a simple way to put it. Um, solid state relay has no moving parts. So what we're able to do with a solid state relay is we can actually pulse width modulate our nitrous solenoids. And I encourage you to, you know, hit the Google look up pulse width if you don't know what that is. Maybe we can talk about it later. If you'd like to know more about it, put it in the questions, you know, I'll, I'll elaborate on pulse width modulation. But what we can do is we can get various nitrous outputs using the same size nitrous jet and the same nitrous solenoid, same nitrous system by pulsing it at a specific frequency. So how a relay will work with this solenoid is it turns on, this goes 100%, it's full open, it's letting all the nitrous through to the jet, that's what you got. Solid state relay, I can send a 50% duty cycle, which does not necessarily open this valve 50%, but what it'll do is it'll pulse the valve at a 50% duty cycle, thus giving us roughly 50% of the nitrous output. Again, it's not a one-to-one, -one, but it's pretty close. It works out pretty close. So how does that, how does that work in the real world? What does that actually mean? You know, once, once we put it into practice, our pro two car, we run that way. So we have a hundred shot direct port system in that car, and we have four selectable power settings for nitrous. Power level one is 25%, 50, 75, and 100%. And we're able to dial in our torque curve in, we, our, our, our torque will jump basically 50, you know, 100 foot pounds of torque, 150, 200 foot pounds of torque, just to the flip of a switch using the same nitrous jet that we have, same nitrous solenoid, same everything. We just change the, the frequency going to the nitrous solenoid. So really need to be able to do that. The other thing you can do with using solid state relays is more, if you let's say you're using nitrous in a naturally aspirated car, we can make the car feel more like a boosted car, like a supercharger or a turbo car with RPM and TPS based nitrous delivery. So we can actually ramp it in like you make it, make it feel like you have a supercharger on your car with nitrous. So kind of neat how Technology is changing, how everything's developing, giving us the ability to do that. So that's it for today's Tech Talk video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, hit like, subscribe. If you guys have questions, put them down in the comments and hope you guys have a great day.